Welcome to another live show. I'm Susan Winter. How are you doing today? Let me move the screen of my camera over. We are talking today about power. And the reason I love these conversations is there are not a lot of people talking about this. Power is underlying your relationship, whether you want to admit it or not, or maybe you are just far too conscious of the fact that yes, it's underlying my relationship. So the question about power dynamics is who has the power? Do you have the power? Are you sure about that? Do they? If you think they do, how can you regain some sovereignty over your side of the street? So today we will talk about dispositional traits, how to create a healthy balance in relationships, and how to distinguish between true power and perceived power, because they are different. Welcome, everybody. Uh, B and Gwyneth are here, my fabulous moderators. I invite you to tell me if you think you have a power imbalance. Tell me, who do you think has the power? And tell me why. Why do you think they have the power? Okay, right off the bat, Nathan Jarrett. $5. Thank you, Nathan. So nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Phil, Mary Jane, Dee Dee, Gwari. Thank you. Kenny is here. So happy I caught one of your lives. I always enjoy your advice. Dane is here. Hi, Susan. New to your channel here. Welcome. It's a safe place. Richard, great to have you back. This is a safe place to have conversations. We have men and women. We have straight and gay. We've got everything here. Everybody is welcome. Because what we're trying to do is cut through the fluff. You know all this stuff. I mean, everybody's got great advice, generic great advice. I want to get into these little things that you're not thinking about, but that you feel them and give you some tools that you can use to rebalance your relationship because a healthy relationship has a balance of power. It may not be the traditional version of what you expect. It may not be... Um, the one with all the money has the power. It might be the one with the youth and the beauty has the power. A lot of my gay guys know this, okay? You just, it, it is, maybe it's the one who's got emotional control. Maybe it's the one who serves as the rock in their relationship. So let's start with what the power differences are. Um, good afternoon, Richard. Um, we just discussed that and we think we are balanced in power. No kidding, B and Gwyneth, you guys are absolutely perfect. Neither of us would like it differently. There are times we find the right person and we don't have to struggle for our power. There are other times that when you're dating in the initial setup stage, that is when you have to put your hands on the steering wheel. All of you who've taken my master classes and my ongoing classes, the first thing I have you do is take a photo of your hands on the steering wheel because I want to remind you that you are in this relationship and you are driving it forward as well. Uh, Barca says, showing, um, thanks for showing us another part of your home interior. I think this is the only time when I've seen so much stuff in your background. This is a house. I have a lot of rooms in here. I got a gorgeous guest room, probably done more in the guest room than any other room in the house. This is my office. You don't want to see my desk. It's like six feet long and it's got paperwork everywhere. The living room is beautiful. And then I've got some antique furniture. Um, my bedroom is gorgeous, but it's, it's all about the, as a mature woman, my darlings, it's all about the lighting. Okay. So that you're going to see where the light is best in New York city. You're going to see there's no feng shui. You don't feng shui a studio. You got what you got. You get what you get. The bed goes here. The chair goes there. And you just hope that everything else is good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, oh, Ultras Garbage Media, $4.99. Thank you for that. Thank you. I always attract people who try to power trip using fear. Wow. This is not uncommon. Okay. It's because they are so terrified that you could have control over them. That's the bottom line. It's so weird. It's just the opposite of how we think. That doesn't make me want to be positive in the relationship either, and I will be stubborn. Wow. I really think we have to work on this. I always attract, because that's not a good thing. So I'd really like you to consider an adjustment within yourself, because <clears throat> if we have repeating patterns, 
I know there's a lot of garbage out there and you say, I'll just garbage media, but I, I know that there are a lot of people out there who are uninformed and do not know how to handle themselves. But you, if you make a little shift on your end, truly what comes to you will be vastly different. So there's something you have about you that is intimidating or they wouldn't do this. Great beauty, great wealth. I don't know. Confidence, swagger. I don't know what's going on with you, but if you have a power that is frightening, obviously we would prefer somebody that can accept all of our power, but you may need to find a way to soften that. Throughout the years, I've used humor and self-effacing humor, if anything, because I stand tall and I walk into a room and I evidently have a presence about me. And I think that that makes many people, well, when I was in school, I know that they thought I was a snob. I was actually very insecure. I just had good posture <laughs> and I could look people in the eye. So um, find out what it is. Listen, work with me. Go to go to my website, susanwinter.net. Go under consultation. Do it once, one and done. Pick a time that works. I think this would be really helpful. Okay, in Yorkshire, we're just coming into spring. Okay, let's see. Oh, Julia, thank you. You're awesome. You've helped me so much over the last three years. Love you, mate. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me talk about several types of power and several type of types of dispositions you are going to meet and how to balance each one and how to figure out what you are. First of all, <clears throat> and this is Robert, this is not Robert Green stuff. This is Susan Winter stuff. <laughs> This is my perception. Um, there's real power and perceived power. Okay? So real power is who actually has the power in a relationship. Sometimes you can see one person that looks like they're in control. They're extremely dominant. But something happens to their partner and they fold like those dominoes that go down and they're a mess because the only power they have is that they realize that person is with them. That person could be the silent person. That person could be the more humble person, but they are the rock that makes the other one puff and strong. Now, traditionally in different types of cultures, it was the mother, the wife, who was the backbone of the family. And I'm not saying she isn't now, but this was a traditional model. She's keeping everything together so the guy can go and bluster and do his thing. But if she falls apart, the family falls apart, he falls apart, that's his security. I have um, a girlfriend who had a very tough mom, very tough, very opinionated, very bossy, very curt. Uh, it was her disposition. Her husband got sick. And I think I've mentioned this before in one of my thousand videos. <laughs> um, she was a mess. Couldn't do anything. He was the silent power in the relationship. Here's another twist. One would assume that the very wealthy, good-looking man but still in shape in his 50s with the 23-year-old girl, he's got all the money. She's there as his plaything, one would assume that he has all the power, right? He may not have the power. She may have the power over him, psychologically, emotionally. So there's power as in who has it. There's power as in who abuses it and uses it to sway another person. Ideally, we would like to discuss a healthy balance of power where both individuals have what I call categories. They have their categories of strength. Do you all remember me telling you the story about my young boyfriend that wanted the category of driving in the snow? Oh man, I made so many mistakes. I'd taken every category, you know, businesswoman, homeowner, two great cars. I mean, like there wasn't anything golfer. There wasn't anything I didn't do. And all he wanted was to have one piece. I, I, I was young. Well, not that young, but I mean, I was new to looking at it this way. And when he said to me, Susan, 
let me have driving in the snow. It was, oh, he had a great sense of humor, my God. But it would really push me back. So part of our power is how we distribute it. Now, I'm going to talk to some of you that clearly know you're in control. You know you're in control of that relationship. You, you manage your partner, you manage the household, you manage the people around you, you manage your company, whatever. And you feel that you're the one in control, right? Until they're not working with you. And this is where we have to start to think of other methods to make people feel powerful too. Because I guarantee you, the natural response is if a human thinks that you are taking all the power, they will have a natural tendency to want to undermine your control and grab power for themselves. And the easiest way to do that is to humiliate you, frighten you, fear of cheating, cheating, flirting, doing things that really push the boundaries of, hey, you really don't have all the power here. And we want to stay away from those dynamics, right? Uh, let me see. Oh, Lance, again with the money. Lance, Lance, Lance. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Lance Beard was here uh, last week, and we talked about what it is to be a true gentleman. This is one of my clients. He's an amazing, amazing, amazing man. And I am so grateful to have such great guys here on this site. Thank you, Lance, for your incredible contributions. Keep sp uh, speaking truth. Um, hi, Susan, uh, one of my favorite people. Thank you so much, Lance. Love to have you here. Midday for all of you. I realize you've got better things to do in the middle of your day, but um, this is the time that I picked to include my Europeans as well. So thank you. Um, Yvonne, when do you agree to get off dating sites and go toward texting and video? ASAP, uh, when you give them your phone number, Facebook Safer. I use a Google number and I think you should too. They're free. Let's just start that if you can't on a dating site, get somebody to video chat you within a cup, within a, a week or so of meeting them, they could be bogus. And if you can't get them to physically meet you in two weeks, because, oh my goodness, they're out of town. Uh, they'll be back in two weeks. Oh no, no, but I'm not back. That's a scammer. You move on. Um, you can communicate. Listen, it just depends on your comfort level, where you live. I mean, what's going on? A Google number is brilliant. I used to give out my personal numbers to all of my clients and my personal email address. And you notice that you can't find an email address on my website. And that's because I get bombarded from every social media portal, every single way that people can to ask me questions about their relationship. So I, I couldn't handle the, uh, the inbox. So I have a Google number that you dial and it transfers to my home phone. But I also have the ability to pre-screen. So when my clients call me, I hear, hi, it's Julia. Uh, press, you know, and then I press to, to let them in. It's kind of like having a Zoom meeting. But I think it's a good idea. Some people just change phone numbers all the time. But you should be meeting right away. You should move from chatting and knowing that you like each other to a face-to-face -face if they're busy and can't get together with you. But definitely, if you can't meet in two weeks, there's a, there's an issue here. I mean, there's if you can't meet in two weeks and they can't go onto a video with you, real problems. Okay, let's uh, agree to go back. Um, Dane says, I think being vulnerable and honest about your partner's feelings, taking time to thank your partner and being very specific about what you're thanking them for, appreciating him being himself when with you. I agree. That's why I made um, the merch line, you're so big and strong. I, I know it's silly. It's kind of like all my bodybuilders are using it now. They're taking the water bottles and they're they're wearing, you know, the, the gym clothes and the sweatshirts and all that. But I, I think that part of the way to reestablish a partner who's getting pissy and testy is because they do not feel seen, heard, loved, or appreciated. So much of the bad behavior that happens inside a relatively good relationship is because somebody just doesn't feel appreciated. They've been doing things and doing things and doing things, and they're finally like, damn, why am I doing this? I, it, they don't seem to notice. They don't care. They keep reminding me of the one thing I didn't do instead of the 10 things I did do. 
So I am fully on board with appreciation. Now, let's get back into power dynamics as far as personality types, all right? In Susan world, there are two types of personalities, mutable and fixed. And for those of you that love astrology, it's a little bit similar, but there are those fixed individuals. This is how they do it. This is the way you do it. This is how they need it to be. And they will come in with their hands firmly on the steering wheel of your relationship and tell you how it's going to go. They mostly attract those of you who are wandering in, stumbling around by accident, just like, I want to be in a relationship. Okay. They attract the others, the mutable signs, meaning you don't like conflict. You're a sport. You'll try it. Why not? If it's something they really want to do, they feel strongly about it. Uh, if it's not, if it's not a game changer for you, you know your bottom line. Mutables know their bottom line, and they're not going to give on certain issues that are really pinnacle pieces. But again, another thing that I'll talk about later is which battles you fight, because that's where you work with dominance or uh, negotiation. So a mutable will almost always be drawn to a fixed and a fixed will definitely be drawn to a mutable. And it's because they can both be themselves. They can both go to their comfort zone. And as I've said repeatedly in relationships, the divine purpose of a relationship on a much higher level is to take two individuals where the spark of romance has occurred and use that as bait to get them into a healing process. Because if you just told two people that were attracted to each other, hey, the higher reason you're together is because you're going to challenge each other, but in a loving manner where your partner is going to be there to support you and help you get through your wounds, and then you're going to shift to a healthy space. You become like, no, I just want some hot sex and somebody to eat pizza with on Friday. So you wouldn't bite the bait. So the initial honeymoon phase is part of the game. We'll get you in the door. Ooh, yum, 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 yum. Everything's good. Nobody is really too powerful on their default, fixed or mutable. Then we get in. Then you get a little comfortable. Relationship status, you get it. Okay, we're either committed. We've defined the relationship. We're a couple. Now it starts playing out full time. If you haven't seen it play out from day one, it starts playing out now because now they reveal their hand as to who they are and they're going to start one or the other will start setting the terms of the engagement if it has not already been done. It's not necessarily wrong, but it's just to keep mindful of who is doing it. So if you think that in general, you are a mutable, that you are, you know, flexible, understanding, I'm going to try Let's see, let's, I'm open-minded enough to kind of go with what you're saying or another kind of injured mutable is one that's like, I don't dare ruffle any feathers because at least I'm in a relationship and they want me. This one is you're at the far end. So think of it as, oh gosh, I got to use my little lipstick here. <laughs> okay. So think of it as, as a, a teeter-totter, right? So you're on this teeter-totter. You're mutable. You're very flexible and open and your partner is fixed. This is the way they do it. Okay. The ultimate goal through this relationship is to have both of you be able to slightly adjust your position so that those of you who are always acquiescing and not wanting to make issues and you know, you'll try it and goal for you, you're going to be tired. You're going to be tired of being nice. You're going to be tired of acquiescing. You're going to be like, Oh, it's the fourth time we went for sushi. I hate sushi. You've got to learn how to speak up. And we're going to talk about this in just a couple of minutes. And for those of you who are fixed, there's a downside for you too. Do you like bullying your partner and always being the one who's right? Aren't you exhausted with being a teacher? Aren't you just fed up with having to micromanage them because you think they're such an idiot they can't do life on their own? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to be constantly managing your partner because you don't trust that they can handle decision-making on their own. But you know why part of that is? Because you've never slightly adjusted to give them a little piece of self-empowerment 
so that they could make their mistakes and you haven't learned the psychological adjustment of, I'm cool here, let me watch this play out. I know they're going to stumble. I'll be here to support, but it's the only way they're going to learn. And if I want harmony, we're going to get more to hear. Because being the leader is exhausting. I've been both players. I tend to be far more agreeable and patient. And the thing <laughs> with that is when you're done, y'all know this. When you're done, you have taken so many adjustments. You have done so much nonsense. You've tried and tried and tried and you're just like, I'm over it. And you're out. And your partner, they don't know what happened. You didn't speak up. Or maybe it was so much work to speak up because they were so embedded in their power. You didn't dare because just keeping peace was of greater priority. We can adjust these positions. And here's the weird thing. As I'm saying this, I hope you're not going, oh, I'm thinking of Jack and he was such a bastard. No, I hated that girl. She was like this. They were ready to teach you a lesson. You just didn't want to hear it or you didn't know how to hear it. I'm thinking you didn't know how to hear it because we don't always have great information on this level. Everyone, 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 everyone who intersects with our life, not for nothing. There's something there. It doesn't have to be a lesson. It doesn't have to be, oh, I had to learn through trial and error and fire. Sometimes it can just be, ah, oh, hmm, seen this before. Okay. What's another thing I can do? Last time I did, ch -ch -ch -ch, mm, that didn't work. Could I do, I don't want to change. It's a little uncomfortable for me, but I don't want this again. Could just be a practice round. Let me try with this person. And then you get <clears throat> out of these positions, okay? Because the more that we go to the, our natural default, the further we get from a healthy relationship. It's easy to do. Trust me. Um, I know there were times that I was so appalled by the manipulation that I saw my partner doing with me that I didn't want to be the very thing I hated. So I went to the far end. And that didn't serve me either. Right? So have you identified who you are? Do you know where you have either micromanaged your partner that you don't need to or given up having a voice when you really could have spoken up? I'm going to look at your messages for a few minutes before I go on to the next session, okay, of what I'm talking about. I'm listening here in Chicago traffic. Can't pull over the big rig now. Love you. <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, I attract broken people. Why? Ah, I had lots of trauma. Okay, so you relate. That I find myself I worked on. I'm a very positive, loving person. I care a lot about people. Why do I attract people who are just not on my level? Um, why don't we go the other way? Why don't we define what is your level and start focusing on that? Will you do me a, a favor? Do an experiment this week for one week. Write, the, write what you're experiencing. Write down the positive opposite. Okay, broke, successful, needy, self-confident, you know, cold-hearted, very warm and empathetic. Write down the opposite and focus on that for one week. Just try it. And when you catch your mind going back like a bad doggy, make sure, nope, that's not you, Nika. She's <laughs> lying <laughs> over in the corner. What if we have baggage from our family of origin? Alessa! Who doesn't? Ha! Good luck. We're all going to carry that. It doesn't go away. It's, it's our experience. We all have baggage from our family of origin, right? I grew up shouted at and abused. Yeah, with you. Okay. So, what now? That's then. What now? What do you want to be now? Draw a line in the sand, go future forward. What do you want to be now? Yeah, it's, you put it back there. It's back, can't change it. You can work with it though, right? 
Okay, let's see. I keep ac okay, Dane, thanks a lot for this good. I keep acquiescing and ending up resenting my ex. Yes. So when we don't get our needs met and we always take care of them, we end up in huge resentment, huge resentment, which blocks our love. And then it becomes a duty. And then the whole relationship is a pain. Then all we do is complain to our friends. Okay. Followed Robert Greene and was successful in getting back my power. Okay. A little manipulative, but okay. But RG's book tends to be unsustainable in the long run. I'm sticking to your channel. Robert Greene has, um, he's been vilified and he's been put on a pedestal. He actually did this because he it kind of was like the guy you kick around at work and got tired of it. He didn't mean it as a tool to control, and manipulate others. But man, that was the handbook for pickup artists. They loved it. You know, uh, um, it shows you the really awful underpinnings, but it also, it puts you in the center of a lot of psychological games. If it's helped you to see it when it happens, excellent. But let's move on from that and try to establish a healthy relationship. Because getting into those power plays means you are more conscious of the game than you are of intimacy and warmth. And maybe that's what you had to do to survive. But if you want to create a healthy relationship moving forward, we're going to try to seek for balance. Your only job is to figure out where you are on that spectrum, right? I'm not trying to highlight this. You just try to figure out how you acquiesce, you've given up too much, you're resentful. What could you do about that? What could you do differently, right? So that you don't have to come to that point that you're always eating shite just to get through the day. Most of all, okay, 99% of my growing up life was trying to avoid the emotional outbursts around me or managing people's emotions so that I could survive just through the day. Uh, and that became more important than, you know, my peace of mind or my resentment or whatever. And I find myself replicating that, Alyssa, and others in my relationships. I had a, I had a personal, real, a 20-year friendship with a person who had an explosive temper and was incredibly kind incredibly selfish to the point that blinders just couldn't care less about the collateral damage. And then also very, you know, thoughtful, but the management of that stuff, it took me 20 years to go. I'm done. It's, there are some, let me just clarify. There are some people that when you step up and you counter them, the price for doing that, they could just turn around and smack you in the face because that's who they are. That's an unsafe person. Unsafe. Unsafe to be with on every level because they're at that level of aggression. And I've experienced it. Um, yes. So we want to find Kind-hearted, nice, balanced, inherently good people. They do exist. It, so, oh God, I hope I don't need like a tag that says return me to if I get lost. But two times in a row in the local supermarket here, you know, those electric checkouts where you just scan it and there's no person there. Well, I have these black carry bags because I don't want to use plastic if I don't have to. And so I put them down there twice in a row. I've walked off with one bag and left the other two times in a row. And thankfully I'm here in the middle of the Southwest in kind of a smaller community. And I've gotten the bags back and everything inside them because I do no more than get to the car. And I'm like, Oh wait, I had two bags. Those are some kind hearted people that live by a code. They're also the same people that I talk to the checkout people. And I'm like, with this self-checkout, like, how do you know they could put the cucumbers up there? And I always tell you that I buy four at a time. They could tell you they got two, and they actually have four. 
they could just forget, you know, that other case of Pepsi that they bought and just pretend they didn't see it and save themselves some money. She said, yeah, some of them do it. Some of them do, but most don't. So we are looking for an inherently good person. Just save yourself listening to endless YouTube videos and reading books. Find a good person. They have to be good because that's who they are. They're not perfect as no human is, but somebody that generally speaking, you don't have to be on guard. You don't have to micromanage because they're so inept at handling their own life. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> That's a whole nother issue. And mostly it's the women that are micromanaging a partner because they don't think that he or she can handle their way in lives. So then you have the ultra responsible person who picks the wounded bird that they're going to heal back to functionality. And that's a whole nother game of exhaustion. Okay. So to get back to this, there's real power. And let me redefine that. Real power is not bluster. It's not, I'm the one with all the money and you listen to what I say. It's not, I've got all the beauty and I could leave you in at any minute. It's not the threats. It's none of that. Real power is the person who chooses to be honest and forthright in their communication and in their mental and emotional design for the relationship and has the courage and power to step into the relationship with love in hand and give it a shot. Not booing and being cynical from the bleachers in the stadium playing the game. And real power means that you know that no matter what goes on, you got yourself, your final, final card you can always play at any time ever is your get out card. It's never off the table. I don't care how people complain. Oh, I can't leave a 20 year marriage. He's been cheating on you for 19 years. You want to live like that? You can leave. So you can always leave. That's your power. You really don't. You think that you cannot survive without them. You just haven't, you haven't been thinking clearly. There's always another way, always, always, but there'll never be another way if you don't entertain the possibility of looking for it. Okay. So there's real power and perceived power. Real power can also be the one who is controlling what appears to be the power. We've seen that happen in a lot of relationships now, haven't we? little person over in the corner that looks like they're not doing anything and they have the steering wheel. Oh, it's propped up in their partner's hands, but it's like, <laughs> like driver's ed where there's a separate steering wheel for the teacher. Oh, even if you go off the curb, yeah, the teacher's like, oh, okay, we got this, right? Okay. So we've talked about real power, perceived power. Who has the power? All right. We've also talked about fixed and mutable signs, and how in Susan's very sophisticated teeter-totter theory, with those of you who've been with me for a long time, you understand this is where all the drama happens, when you're on one end or the other, and you are embedded in that place. Yes, it could have been family of origin, but it is our job to move forward, to adjust. So now, I bet you're going to want to know, how do we do this? And before I get there, Find the gym. Let go of the broken cookie. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Hi, everyone. A bit late. Thomas, welcome. How are you doing? Another client of mine. Okay, Susan, I feel so defeated by my unsuccessful dating life that I have practically no motivation to get back out there. Okay, that's a choice too. Completely valid. Though I'd still quite like to find somebody special. Any advice? Okay. Carefully review. Well, I suggest you have a consultation with me so we can do this in like under an hour. But if you don't or you can't, thanks for showing up here. Um, I don't really know what the underlying issue is until I talk to you, but let me take some guesses. You could have a limited selection. Maybe you're in an environment where you just don't have that many people that you meet. Maybe you hate going online. Who doesn't? You may have to make an effort to get to a greater dating pool, and then really filter. Your clarity, do not be afraid to see the red flags. Most of you that have had unsuccessful dating have wanted a partner so badly that you've kind of ignored the red flags and then get slapped in your face. 
or you attract people that never had a serious intention because you were excited by the fact that maybe there's a possibility. Don't let the excitement of the possibility confuse you to accepting something that you haven't filtered for. So again, your greatest, your greatest protection is absolute clarity on the kind of relationship you want to experience. The partner will show up in relation to that. Design your relationship. Get it very, very clear. See it, see it, see it. Refine it, see it. And do not discount little wins. Oftentimes before we make our way to a, a permanent partnership, you know, or I should say, you know, um, a defined partnership, there will be little things that show up and they leave. Don't be discouraged. I, I just worked with a guy and, um, you know, many of my gay clients are like, oh my God, does anybody even do monogamy? Does anybody even do a committed relationship? I'm like, yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, I know who they are. They do. So he had these little like hope and it would dissipate. And I said, don't, don't look at that like one more loss. You're pulling it in. You're pulling it in. You're pulling it in. They fall off the conveyor belt. That's cool. The little broken ones are going to fall off. The broken ones for you may be perfect for somebody else, but let them go. You're in the process. So you might have had progress, but you didn't acknowledge it. So if you don't acknowledge it, the universe goes, oh, well, same thing with appreciation. I guess I'm never going to make her breakfast in bed. She didn't say thank you. The universe is like, I guess she didn't want the good stuff because she didn't acknowledge it and she didn't even thank us for it. So, or he, so just so you know, okay. Cause JG, I don't know which one you are. Okay. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Anna, hi, how are you doing? Terry, here late. Hi, all about being truly appreciative. So you get what I'm saying, right? Okay, so now let's talk about what happens when you know that you're in a jam and something has to shift and you do not have the power, right? You got a sticky situation, all right? So, um, and Vishnu, I'll get to you in just a minute. I'll try, I'll try not to go any further than this, all right? Um, one, and this is back to my basic communication commands. Clearly, 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 mentally, isolate within two sentences, max. If you can't do it in two sentences, you'll never have the focus for your mind. Think of it as a thumbnail. It's got to be that precise, right? What is the issue that's bothering you? How can you clearly articulate that in under 20 seconds? What would you like to experience instead? Because you have to speak up to your partner. And if you feel that you can't even safely talk to your partner, get the hell out. That's not a good relationship. We should never feel terrified of speaking to our partner. Right? If you've got to walk on eggshells to maintain a relationship, get yourself into therapy ASAP because that's not a relationship. We're talking about building healthy relationships here. We're not talking about eroding your self-esteem and self-confidence by keeping you in something negative. All right. Now, Vishnu, I'm going to get back to you. Um, Vishnu says, Susan, what about people who desire to surrender their control to their partner? Okay. I have a strong inclination for female-led relationships. Okay. However, not pursuing the same because it's not normal. Well, let's get very clear on, are you talking about sexual submission or are you talking about psychological submission? Um, there's probably another component here that's important to you. Um <laughs> Uh, it sounds like there's some, you know, dominant submissive stuff going on here, whether you know it or not. And I'm going to say th there's no judgment on how people want to express themselves. So let me be really clear about that. But have you not realized that by creating the design that I intend to submit to somebody, you've already taken control? I mean, you've already created the design. This is what you want. Now, my question is, how does that benefit you? Why does that benefit you? Why do you want to be controlled? That's a psychological thing. And 
get very clear, <laughs> get for you, especially you need to be very clear as to how far that control extends. Does it extend to your behavior in the relationship? Does it extend to commands and directives given to you? Does it extend to humiliation, degradation? Does it extend to you financially? Does it extend to your reputation? Where do you call the line to be drawn? Because you've got to, even when you're going to submit, you still got to have the power to know where your boundaries are. Yours is a little complicated. <laughs> I love questions like this. It's like, oh my goodness, you got 45 minutes. Okay, on we go. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, hi, Susan. I'm also late. Mimi, I don't care if you're late. I'm glad you're here. Jeff, the issue has always bugged me with my ex-girlfriend was she would never tell me the truth, even though I gave her plenty of ways to get out of the relationship. All I wanted was some honesty. She didn't know, Jeff. So I, I need to repeat this because I've said this over and over again, but I never know which, again, of nearly a thousand videos you haven't seen. There are two reasons people don't tell you the truth. One, they're ashamed. Well, actually three. One, they're ashamed. It makes them look bad. Two, they don't want to hurt you because they don't think so well of you in a certain way. Like we always say to somebody like, oh, I just don't feel the chemistry. And that's code for, dude, I'm not attracted to you at all. Ugh. You know, I, I don't like the shape of your calves. I don't know what it is. I hate your funky toes. It, it, so they're ashamed because they have to say it. They don't want to hurt you. That's number two. Number three. They don't know. That's the most frightening. The most ill-equipped person to enter a partnership is the one that doesn't know why they, why they feel the way they feel. You know what? You got nowhere to go with that. And this is why they're an ex. And you want that. Yeah. You want them to be an ex because they didn't have a skill set to be in a relationship. So thankfully it's an ex. And Vishnu says, I believe it's psychological submission. Okay. What's the benefit to you? Where's your payoff? Even people that look like they're acquiescing, there's a payoff. There's always a payoff. It might be one that we don't want anymore because we're an adult now. Many of us have acquiesced to air to safety, physical safety, or to keep the peace because disruption is something we want to put in our past because we've lived with so much of it. Chaotic you know, unpredictable, flying, vicious emotions and anger and violence. We just want to put it in our past. So you just don't want it in the future. So where does your psychological, what, what you need to know your boundaries? Believe me, I'm going to say it again. If you don't know what you want, you're going to get what they give you. Seriously. If you don't know what you want, you will get what they give you. And that's harder to turn around than in the beginning of a relationship when you're giving your input as to how you think it's going to happen. Because you've got the idea in your mind of what you want to create. Uh, Guri, I, I don't know why your messages in Super Chat are getting deleted. We do know that there are problems sometimes that people can't get. All of the, They can't do things in Super Chat. That's not uh, me, me, no techno. I don't know. So I, I, that's not it, but we've had this before. And then eventually goes through the payoff is the satisfaction of the emotional level. It's a sort of reward. Hmm. Well, um, to be honest, given complete control over another person, I doubt that the general amount of humanity out there would do a good job with it. I think they'd run rogue and just please themselves. And I worry more about the kind of person you're going to pull in that's going to really like doing that to you. Psychological control, I don't know. Again, I truly suggest, and as you said, it extends to the boundary at the level of humiliation. Okay, you got a whole nother thing going on here. This is kind of outside of the territory of this. I, I understand it. Um, I'm not sure, should I consult a psychologist? However, this desire is affecting my normal life. I'm not a therapist. 
I want to be really clear. And always the disclaimer is to go to a therapist. There are people who really are involved in different variations of a BDSM lifestyle. It works for them and there's a payoff. But even in that community, I have to tell you, the portion that I truly respect is that done properly, it is a mutual agreement as to how far these boundaries go. My understanding from Dom's is that there's nothing more beautiful than somebody who could have, who, who's got power, who submits to them through love and gives them total control up to the point of where they stop. Because there's always got to be that red line that you stop. And that the submissive feels that the act of giving themselves over and knowing that they'll experience this thing that excites them up to this point is the level of trust. Now, I've, I've had clients like this before, and I just, I can only tell you that this portion is out of my hands, okay? I'm not the specialist for this, but there are communities, and always, always, this is why we have to know what we want in order to know where we extend our boundaries in this or any other design. Anytime you're doing a la carte anything other than man marries woman, two kids, picket fence, I know the rules, I know what I'm supposed to do and not. Any variation of that, which is most everything we're living nowadays, has to be, you have to have your voice. So you have to speak up. And I think I was just at the point of speaking up again Know what you want. Know why you want what you want. That's very important. And remember, a healthy relationship is about you both have the power. Now, the power starts, one, by knowing, two, by speaking it and establishing it. There are cases where you might not have to speak. It's inherently understood. Um, certain people will take certain roles. And maybe it's a role that is, is okay. You know, who handles the money? That's a form of power as long as you have equal decision-making. So again, this is very individual to each one of your relationships. All right. Let me go on. Let me just see if I can answer any more questions here. Um, Gwyneth, thank you for helping everybody. Exactly. I only got what he wanted to give, not what I needed. Ah, yes. There we go. There we go, Gigi. So I ended it. It will be hard with shared children and properties, but we'll get through it. Gigi, you and so many millions of others that have had to separate. But I, I, I probably assume that you walked into this as a young person, imagining that love would take care of everything. And as we've learned, um, love is not enough. Love will not take you the distance. Real relationships survive when they say, oh, it's a lot of work. Well, they make it sound like, oh, oh, I'm pushing this, you know, Mack truck, truck, truck up an icy hill. No, work means the clarification of what you experience and what you want and how you communicate with your partner. It's such a, it's such a fundamental basis. The work is the structural relationship. How does the relationship functions? Who gets to decide what? Now, some of you be fair in partnership. You're a little greedy. Are you the one that always gets to decide where the vacations are? And that's because your partner acquiesces. Is that because is now here's always the question do i need what i do i do let's see the 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 battle that i'm fighting over okay so this is know your battles right so this is another point know your battles you should fight for the things that you really have to have and you do that before you even enter a relationship and if you're already in one you start to ask yourself now what is my bottom line? What will I not negotiate on? And that has to be very clear to your partner. Again, these things are better done in the beginning so we don't have to, you know, tear up everything and redo it again. But everybody's got a bottom line. Some people are like, I, I like all food. I don't care. Makes her happy to pick the restaurant. I really don't care. 
But the bottom line is, but I am not sitting through an entire day of the ring cycle at the Metropolitan Opera because I'm not up for 10 plus hours of Wagner. Don't want it. Not doing it. So that's your bottom line. So here's the fun thing about relationships. Be very generous on what you don't care about. And make sure your partner knows, oh, honey, this is fine. Let's do it your way. Let's do it your way. You're so big and strong. Let's do it your way. Yeah, they got to win. Woohoo! You gave them something you couldn't care less about. And believe me, whether they know it or not, they're doing the same to you. Oh, it's okay. We'll go there. Okay? That's how you negotiate. So the question to ask yourself is, what's your bottom line? Power lies in knowing what you want, knowing why you want it, being able to speak and being able to create the kind of relationship where you have input. It's two people in a healthy partnership, negotiating their way through the things that occur. What about big decisions? You both have to decide. You're going to buy a home together. You like one area, your partner likes another. Now you get into the weeds about it. You present your case, they present their case. You could be at loggerheads. This could be a major concern for both of you. This could be one of your battles. And that's when it's a battle. So there's always a way to find a negotiation. Always a way. There could be a, look at, I do not want to live in that town because of this, this, and this reason. What about a third option? Right next to it is this town. It's kind of neutral. You and I still have access to the two towns we like the most, but it's dot, 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 dot. What would you think about that? How would you consider a lease in that neighborhood just to see if we both like it? Because you think you really like it, and I'm telling you I know you're not. So, Do you see what I'm saying? There's always another way. So be creative. All right. We're nearly coming to the end of the hour. Um, thank you, Susan and Thomas. I needed to consult a therapist, as Susan suggested. I'm spending too much time in my own fantasy world. So what happens is I suggest therapy whenever we have something that we can't work our way through. And it's starting to get in the way of our day-to-day -day life. We've all got issues that we mull about. And normally, with the education that all of you have that are on this channel already, you're psychologically and spiritually aware. You are self-aware. I don't pander to the general public. The, the, you're all a very elite and special group that are aware of a lot of things and come in very prepared to be in a relationship, heads above other people out there. So I'm not, I'm not worried about you, okay? It, it's the other people out there that may not know what they're doing but you're all very aware. But when you can't figure challenges out on your own, that, yeah, that's the time to seek help from whomever is the, the specialist of your choice. All right. Any last questions before we move on about power, who's got the power, perceived power, what is power? Susan, you helped me more people just, okay, Susan, you have helped me more people with just simple clarity. That helps many people just get over the last hill to get to a better situation in life. P.S. Thanks. Nika is so cute. Did you all see what Lauren did with Nika's little love life? We use Nika's love life um, as a prompt because it's fun. And Lauren, I told her what I wanted. I wanted Nika in a leather jacket. AI is amazing. So we put Nika in a little leather jacket with sunglasses on next to Mulligan, her newest crush who lives right over there, over there. Mulligan lives in the house on the other side of that window. Okay. So um, we decided it's about time Nika's in a healthy relationship. <laughs> and it's a cute little, it's a cute little video. Uh, on the community page and on my Instagram page, I got the power. And it's like, who has the power in the relationship? He's hogging, chasing squirrels. He won't let her do that, but she's so much faster at yellow ball. So it kind of evens out. If you have a question, don't hesitate to put it in a video request. All right. I want you all to consider signing up for my newsletter. 
Um, it's at the, t uh, the very homepage of SusanWinter.net. I don't sell this information. I don't even know how to do anything with it. You can unsubscribe at any time. Um, the reason I do it is this month, um, I was giving $100 off a session. And that's good. I only had 10 slots. I've only got two left. But the people who get the newsletters, they were the ones that know about it. And they have the code to do it. So don't throw those away. There's always something in there that's for your benefit. And um, I'll only do it through the newsletter, not through general uh, information here. So that's that. Have you picked up the audiobook Allowing Magnificence? This especially would be something you'll really like. I think that was the book that B was going to translate into German for me. It's it's really good. It talks. It is not about dating and relationships. Please don't confuse that. It's about you and how you handle life's challenges. And um, it was from some heavy, heavy, deep work I did back in 2004 and 2005. It was just 20 years too soon. And so I've released it more recently. And I used AI because I would never have the time or money to be able to do two and a half hours. But I think you're going to really like the voice I do. And in time with AI generation, I can do my own voice and put them into these because believe me, the cost of making breakup triage was ridiculous for 33 minutes, like tapped out over $1,100. So, and these are mostly free on Audible if you have a subscription or they're a couple bucks. So if you don't like to read, consider allowing magnificence. And for those of you who like the deeper angle on life, I've got a quote that was the most requested. The quote is this, consider this, what if it's all perfect? And that means if this very moment of crisis challenge is so daunting to you, that you're right in the thick of it, you're going through the eye of the needle, you cannot imagine why you have to have this thing in your life right now. What if it's perfect? Not for this moment, but for the next moments to occur. Life changes <laughs> oftentimes aren't an easy just let's turn to the left. They can be like, Arr! they can be a complete 180. When life wants to reroute you to a better, more fertile, experience, it will oftentimes throw real roadblocks in your way. Some roadblocks through determination we can get through, and there's a distinction. There's another kind of ending that closes, and I talk about it in Allowing Magnificence. It, it's like there's just this crash. It's like everything that you did no longer works. Everything that got you from A to B, it's gone. It, it's, it's what I call the death cycle. And the death cycle, don't worry, because right after death, you have birth, okay? But a cycle in your life, a cycle of being, a way that you've been looking at things, you go through it and you go through it and you go through it. And finally, the universe just goes, ah, you're, you're not listening. Here we go. And you have no other choice other than to reset. It's not here to take you down. Life's challenges are not here to destroy us. They are here to inform us. And no, please don't look at every day and every situation as, oh, I've got another lesson. Nobody likes those lessons in school. It's really, no, there's another benefit here. I just got to find it. And sometimes time will bring it on. You can even know there's a benefit, go through it and keep a positive mental attitude and then still be saying, oh my God, like, okay, I, I, I'm trying, I'm believing, I'm believing, I don't see it, I don't see it, but you will, okay? So that's what I wanted to talk about. Oh, 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 very important. Next week, there's no live show. I have a doctor's appointment next week. Some doctors only want to see me on Thursdays. I can't believe it. Like the one day I don't want to be here. Okay. Thank you, Susan and Thomas. Okay. Um, how about, how about I'm the back of the shirt we put? You're so smart and wise. That's great. <laughs> oh, by the way, with all of my designs, um, you will see for the merch line here, only one or two representations. When you actually click through and go to the full website at Spreadshop, you can change the coloring of the, the font. So if it's like a dark uh, t-shirt, 
it's got dark print. You can change it to white. You can change it to yellow. You can change the design to the back. Almost all of these, you can change the size and the placement and the coloring and everything. And there are about 40 different merch products, everything from mugs to water bottles to duffel bags to stickers to a pillows, baby clothes that say you're so big and strong or whatever. But each one has a lot. You're just not seeing them because YouTube really restricts me on what is available. Okay. Um, another thing is if you are in the middle of a power struggle and a game, well, one, of course, get a consultation with me, but two, check out the dating games guide. That's the quick flip through of like, okay, don't have time to read the 48 laws of power. I just, what's happening right now, this, 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 and this is happening and AI will find it in the entire collection. Oh, golly, there must, how many videos? It must be 400 videos. It'll go right to the sections you want to see. Okay. So no no live show next week. Um, let me see. I think that's it. Again, it's not what you have. It's what you control. And you control yourself and your participation. All right. So everybody, Esther, you just got here from Chicago. I'm sorry, missed the show, Dee Dee. Susan and everyone here for your transparency and sharing and support. Thank you, everybody. I won't be here April 18th, which is next Thursday, but then we start again. Okay. B and Gwyneth, thank you. Everybody, let me know what you would like to hear on these shows. This power conversation came from a video request. That's how he put it. And I made a separate video for him with all of his content. But if you have something here, please leave it for me. Okay. So that I will know what it is. Put it in the comments after the show goes live or write it to me just so I know. Okay. Everybody see you in two weeks. Thanks so much.